Oh, now we go to value added tax. This is one of the topics. It's the favorite of bar examiners. We'll break this down into several video lectures because there are a handful of topics. But we'll go first with section 105. So remember that persons liable are those who sliver in the course of trade or business where gross sales or receipts exceeds 1.5 million. That's section 236G. Let's go there. This one. So persons who are required to register for value-added tax. So any person who's liable you have to register your business for value-added tax if your gross sales or receipts for the past 12 months other than those that are exempt under section 109 have exceeded 1,500,000 pesos and those uh, there are reasonable grounds to believe that his gross sales or receipts for the next 12 months other than those that are exempt under section 109A to V will exceed 1,500,000 1, pesos okay so that's your basis. Now, the sliver means you, those who sell, lease, import goods, barter, exchange, render service. And you must remember that VAT is an indirect tax. The amount may be shifted or passed on to the buyer. Usually, they are shifted. And in the course of trade or business, trade, in the course of trade or business, means the regular conduct or pursuit of a commercial or an economic activity. There's this case, I think the Mindanao G-Thermal, this one when they sold a, I think a property, it was a Nissan Patrol. We'll go to that later because it was the transactions incidental there too. Now, you take note that what is a tax on transactions imposed at every stage of the distribution process on the sale on the sliver okay and in the course of trade or business requires the regular conduct or pursuit of a commercial or an economic activity regardless of whether or not the entity is profit oriented so you remember that so long as it is a commercial or economic activity then it would be subject to tax if the activity or this the the commercial or economic activity is covered and what and in sandro okay it is a system where by the value where these the taxpayer adds a value to the chain of transaction for simplicity and efficiency in tax collection, the VAT is imposed not just on the value added by the taxpayer, but on the entire selling price of his goods, properties, or services. However, the taxpayer is allowed a refund or credit on the VAT previously paid by those who sold him the inputs for his goods, properties, or services. The net effect is that the taxpayer pays the VAT only on the value that he adds to the goods, properties, or services that he actually sells. So you have this output VAT and you have this input VAT. They will just offset each other. The, the output VAT is the VAT which is the component of the price or the selling in the selling price, the product, your product. When you sell and you're covered in under section 236G, you should you should be registered under the VAT system. And whenever you sell, you have this 12%. Okay, and say for example, okay, the Haplasius Owell. When you sell your Haplasius Owell and your VAT registered, then you pass it on to your end consumer. Okay, so say for example, the cost is 100 and that's, you add the 12% there. Then the, the customer will pay 112 pesos for the battle of your haplasius owl okay now for you to make the haplasius you would have to buy some lana or the, the coconut not the mantika but the lana 
say for example that you buy the 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 lana like uh, say 20 so you buy that from a okay not the lana because it's it's process or it's in the agriculture agricultural side of it but it may not be covered by VAT. the um the container the bottles okay so say for example you have 20 pesos a bottle so we'll buy that bottle from your supplier at you'll pay 22.40 okay so you have this 20 pesos and 2.4 input what 2 pesos and 40 centavos now at the end of the or every month you will have to remit that your output VAT would be uh, for discussion sim sim simplicity it will be compared with your input VAT okay your output VAT the input VAT would be deducted from your in output VAT so you have this 12 right so 12 minus 2.4 you will remit to the BIR the 9 pesos and 60 centavos VAT because that's how that's how you you do the VAT here y you will the VAT output or the output VAT would be offset with the input VAT that you but that's the idea because you have this input you, you bought something from uh, for for the it's a direct cost or for the material of your product so in the example you have this 20 or 12 peso watt component output watt because you sold one 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 bottle of haplasius oil and to to make this haplasius oil as the with the container and the brand and everything there is this input watt for you to make that at 2.4 so the the result is you will have to remit nine peso and 60 centavo to the BIR but that's that 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 is the how the VAT works or the value added system, tax system works but as said in Tolentino versus Secretary of Finance the VAT is different it is not a license tax it is not a tax on the exercise of a privilege much less a constitutional right it is imposed on the sale, barter, lease, or exchange of goods or properties, or the sale of exchange of services, and the lease of property purely for revenue purposes. To subject the press to its payment is not to burden the exercise of its right, any more than to make the press pay income tax or subject, subject it to general regulation, is not to violate its freedom under the Constitution. So, you remember to Tolentino versus Secretary of Finance, they, the, the press, the media people uh, questioned the, the imposition of the VAT because it violates their freedom. That's the explanation there. And in context versus CIR, the seller who is directly and legally liable for payment of an indirect tax such as VAT on goods or services is not necessarily the person who ultimately bears the burden of the same tax. It is the final purchaser or consumer of such goods or services who, although not directly and legally liable for the payment thereof, ultimately bears the burden of the tax. And you remember this destination principle and cross-border doctrine. This is under Atlas Consolidated Mining versus CIR. What's this? According to the destination principle, goods and services are taxed only in the country where these are consumed. In connection with the said principle, the cross-border doctrine mandates that no VAT shall be imposed to form part of the cost of the goods destined for consumption outside the territorial border of the taxing authority. Hence, Actual export of goods and services from the Philippines to a foreign country must be free of VAT, while those destined for use or consumption within the Philippines shall be imposed with 10%. So this is not 12%. Export processing zones are to be managed as a separate customs territory from the rest of the Philippines, and thus, for tax purposes, 
are effectively considered as foreign territory. So, the consequence, sales by persons from the Philippine customs territory to those inside the export processing zones are already taxed as exports. So, if it's an export, that should be what free or, yeah, zero rated. So, anyway, that's, that's the idea. You just remember this destination principle and cross-border doctrine. We'll, we'll go next to what? Uh, the sale of goods and properties and the sale of services and use of lease of properties. Because there are several uh, discussions that we will tackle here and also the exempt transactions. That's, that's it for the, the principles, the basics of value-added system or value-added tax system.